The Dona, originally shared by the Dutch settlers who came to New York, has now become an American staple. Frosted, glazed, jelly, cider, the donut has changed a lot over the course of history, but most people today imagine this. This week, we celebrate the entrepreneurial journey of Desdemona Dahlia, a New Jersey native who is committed to bringing back the time-honored traditions of this tasty treat. Broad Street Doco, first founded in 2014, has since become an acclaimed donut haven. Now, with three locations and a team of over 40, we sit down with her to find out how she built and plans to expand this donut dynasty. I'm Elliot Dweck. This is From the Founder. Let's talk about donuts. <laughs> oh, okay. Actually, before we get to the donuts, we want to talk about you. So, my ex-husband grew up in the food industry. He has Italian uh, restaurants, pizzerias, and learned a lot from him. Yeah. So that's where you got your start, mm -hmm. and you were just messing around, just messing and seeing around. What, what was what was hitting, what was missing. Mm -hmm. In the fryer with the chicken fingers and the French fry, all different things, and right. um, working on creating the, the best product that I could create. I felt like I had perfected the donut. Um, you finish college, mm -hmm. now what? I get married and I have kids. Okay. Um, I was out in the workforce, but ultimately, um, after you know, just shy of ten years in the workforce, got married, had kids, uh, but always, you know, put my personal dreams aside because of that role. And I had this idea, and I said, you know what, I'm not gonna let another idea go by without implementing it. So I finally said, okay, now I have the time, mm -hmm. and I have the idea, I'm gonna go for it. How did you get into this business? So I had this burning desire to create this donut shop. You know, my go-to donut shop growing up was Dunkin' Donuts. That was the place to get the hot, fresh donut, great coffee. No. Oh, fast forward many years later, okay. uh, the product changed. The product changed, and I felt like there was definitely a need for a hot, fresh product uh, made without additives and preservatives. So you, you have this idea. You say, I'm going for it. But you've never really done something like this. Where do you even begin? I don't know. I look back to when I first opened, and, it, and I, I scratch my head like I can't believe I did it like that because it was really like flying by the seat of my pants um, and learning as I was going. Are you nervous at all? Yes, <laughs> yes, absolutely. I'm still nervous every day. You know, there's, and I think that the minute that that stops, that's when the growth really stops. Right. You know, when I opened Freehold, I was nervous were people gonna walk through the doors. And we did a post Thursday night at 6.30 and it was like seven, 8,000 likes and people were lined up around the building the following morning and we were like, wow. How, how big is the team now? About 45 people. Wow. How did you know that you open up this first location in Oakhurst, how do you know that anyone's gonna walk through the store? You don't, you don't, you just don't. And right. I started posting a donut fact a day to try and ah. draw in people. Like, did you know that the official donut of Hawaii is XYZ and 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 build up. I didn't even know there were donuts. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I can't remember the name of it, but so I kept doing that with the social media and posting pictures of my kids and me, you know, staining the wood in Oakhurst and, and doing the counters and um, just, you know, building up a little momentum like that. And by the time we opened the doors in in Oakhurst. Uh, it was a Tuesday morning, there was a line around the building, and people were super supportive of this, you know, woman that's opening up this donut shop with her, you know, kids in, in tow, and, um, and that's how really everything began. Why do you think that there was a line around the corner? I think that the consumer today is starting to take a vested interest in what they're consuming. They are really taking a vested interest in shopping small and believing in the small business owner. Because uh, here I am putting everything on the line for a donut shop, right? Right. You know, I don't, I, there's no room for me to make a mistake with this. And um, I'm trying to just be authentic to myself and to those around me. Uh, and I think that that really resonated with people. Whatever combination it was, it definitely worked with Oakhurst. Um, 
and that's given me the footing to go forward with other locations and an amazing team behind me. I mean, my team is, every team in every store is just unbelievable. How did you figure out how to hire a team? My mother was making dough, my ex-husband was helping me, my kids were helping me, my daughter was 13, 14 years old, you know, helping me. It was, it was friends, family, I had hired a few people, um, but we figured it out as we went along. I didn't know. I didn't know any of that. You know, who could have predicted? Um, it was a lot of 18, 20 hour days, you know, making donuts all day and scrubbing sheet pans until midnight. What were those few months like? Was it, it grueling? Was it exciting? I've never hustled so hard in my entire life. Nobody can explain to you um, that kind of hustle. You know, the, I would say the first year solid was really, it's kind of a blur to me, but I loved every minute of it. I love, I love every minute of this Doko ride. What's the most popular donut? I would have to say, that I have an off the menu item that is not on the menu because we sell out of it on the daily and make it throughout the day. The cha cha churro bites are amazing. So those are my that. cronut bites, tossed in cinnamon sugar, a little bit of glaze. Mm. Um, they're ama like absolutely amazing. We've always been very interactive since day one with our customers. You'll see on the social media donuts named after, you know. You say, oh, Des, I like this flavor. All right, Elliot, let's make this donut, and we're going to name it the Elliot. So, my dream. yeah, we have to do that. I don't have an Elliot yet. It was at this moment I realized I needed to taste one of these. And with the chance to make my own Elliot donut, we got behind the donut line. Okay, so we're here in the back. Yeah. I don't see donuts. No, everything's made to order. So the donuts are right over here. You're telling me that somebody walks in mm -hmm. and it's a specialized order each time? Yeah, absolutely. And it's, it's made on the spot. It's made on the spot. I'm overwhelmed. We have a lot going on Walk here. me through it. Okay, let's do a caramel dip. Wow. It's all on the wrist action. Okay. Okay? Should I loosen up the wrist a little? Yeah, okay. loosen up the wrist. You got it. Right. Start from the bottom. Okay. You're going to turn it upside down and then you're going to take that and dip it right into the caramel. Is that good? Good, good, okay. good. I'm How do we here. dip? So you're gonna take this. Oh wow, you did a little swirl. Did a little swirl. Not bad. Well, yours looks much better than mine. You're getting there, you're getting there. <laughs> okay. Can we make a new signature donut? Yes. Elliot? Yeah. Yeah. What's that? Right over here? Yeah. Strawberry glaze. Strawberry okay, let's lemon, do strawberry. Orange. You ready? We're gonna do the swirl. Push it down a little bit more. Mm hmm Oh, I lost it. Oh, I got it. You got it? Okay, okay. So What's that? That is Cotton Candy Crunch. Oh, I'm that's in. a good one. Yeah, you're doing good. Go ahead. Yes. Wow. Oh, look at how beautiful that is. That's a donut. That is a donut. That's the Elliot right there. Okay, so now I'm back here. Yeah. I'm noticing an all-female staff. Yes. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, we have a great team. It just happens to be all broads. What we have found success with is this wonderful tribe of women that um, just slay the dough all day and can multitask like that. I like that, it. slay the dough. I'm not gonna lie, folks. That donut just melted right in my mouth. Um, let's talk about the future for Broad Street. Mm -hmm. What does it look like? The future is pretty bright for Broad Street Doco. We have a lot of things in the works right now. You know, I get people asking about franchises all the time, and people reach out every day saying, can I have a Doco, open Doco in Arizona, open it in Florida, open it in Texas. And they want to franchise it, or they're just saying they're you say should go Both. I see Doco in 10 years with numerous locations in certain select markets that I feel like, you know, is what Doco is. Um, and the possibility of exploring the franchising. Um, I think the, the natural um, focus for, for me right now is expansion in Jersey. Um, expansion in California will be coming. 
And that's been a, like a tremendous journey. We've learned myself and the uh, East Coast management team flew out there. Literally, the team is texting me in the morning saying, you know, before we board the, the meet at the airport, and they're like, so we're really doing this. And I'm like, so we're really doing this. Like, here we are, like a bunch of donut broads getting on the plane, flying to, you know, California. It was kind of a big deal for us. Yeah. So when you say donut broads, did that go into the name of Broad Street Doco? Yeah. So. I always felt like I was a tough broad and a lot of, you know, women don't really like that that word or but I always kind of stood by it, you know, and it, it stands for everything that I am. And I said, Oh, there's broad streets everywhere, so it's gonna be Broad Street Doka. You know, it was really about a collective teamwork kind of makes the dream work philosophy too. You, you mentioned yourself as a tough broad. Mm -hmm. What makes you say that? I'm fearless. I definitely have fear, but I'm a risk taker. I'm authentic, um, a go-getter, warm, compassionate person. And these are all, I mean, the traits can go on and on that I feel about, you know, my inner self and my team and those around me. But I'm definitely a warrior and I never give up. So to me, that really embodies the word, you know, broad. I think it's, it's strength. It's digging deep for, you know, this past year, every day, you know, had to realign my thoughts and pivot. And how are we going to operate? And how am I going to keep keep the team employed? Yeah. So that's a broad. That's a tough broad. Do you see yourself doing anything else? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. This is uh, this has been an amazing wild ride for me and for my daughter. For my teams. As a matter of fact, we were scouting new locations the other day and my daughter was with me and it was her first time being with me and she's like, I cannot believe you've done, you've done this by yourself this entire time, like looking at new, like she said, this is great. And I got to see that next generation coming through. We're just a bunch of badass broads.